the painter essentially creates a garden in which to lead the viewer's eyes. And the composition of this garden are like the paths that lead you through so you can see the beautiful flowers and the wonderful vistas. If you get lost in the paths, or they're unclear, you're going to get irritated and frustrated. But a skillful artist can use these compositional elements to lead you on this magical mystery tour. So let's take, for example, we have here a triangle, this cream triangle over her um, shirt here. And then against that, we have these, the two hands, same lightness of color, although they protrude somewhat through into a three-dimensional space, um, they, they are quite equally balanced in tone and are balancing over this triangle here. This top triangle intersects with the bottom triangle. Right here where they intersect is the central part of the painting. It's where all the eye is ultimately always led, is to this point, because it's at this point where the dagger, if she so chooses, is going to plunge. The two hands and the head of a similar fleshiness, causing another triangle. Then we have movement here from this hand through the chain, up through this barely noticed curtain at the back here that brings us above the head, poised as we look through her eyes, back to our central point, back to the center. So wherever we choose to enter this painting, Rembrandt will have set traps. So once we're inside, he's going to enchant us. So we're not going to want to leave this surface. Let's say we enter over this hand here. We see the pinks and the grays here. See how wonderfully rendered this hand seems. It's delightful. If we follow it into the darkness, we see the greens of the veins. Those greens pick up the other greens around the dress here. We see the whole painting. It's a very subdued song of oranges and greens. The lacy cuff here looks exquisitely rendered from a distance. Every little thread perfectly poised. If we go in close here, we can see it's just a scuff of grays and whites and blues, a little dance of abstract shapes. And as we move back, by some strange miracle, it coalesces into this illusion of the perfectly placed rough. It's delightful. And so, we hunger for more. What else has he done? Look at this lovely shining material here. But again, as we move in, it's just a tumbling dance of the silks, the oranges, up through her face. Her sad, contemplative eyes. If we move in close to those eyes, what do we see? We see little orange marks floating above these clouds of gray. Again, we have the pure, the orange, and that bluey gray. They set off an abstract stimulation into our mind. They are also transformed into the eyes of Lucretia, who is this being, almost still alive from hundreds of years ago, preserved for our contemplation, as she looks down and contemplates her fate, the fate of all of us. Is life really worth the struggle? Should we take charge of our own destiny, end our lives, or live slaves to our fear of the void? Perhaps Rembrandt in this answers that very question by enchanting us with this imagery with his skill as an artist, 
as we contemplate the void, he's telling us, but aren't human beings magnificent? Isn't it incredible what they can create? Isn't looking at this beauty worth staying for? The beauty of the painting, the beauty of the woman, the beauty of her struggle, the struggle against tyranny, the struggle of all of us against mortality, 